thank you Wahoo um, we've been going backwards and forwards through your support channel uh, and uh, as a result of my last video which showed me doing an experiment on how to balance the flywheel on this thing which actually worked by the way actually I've ridden it a couple of times it works really well um, but it's a bit of an unsafe and unsightly solution so Wahoo got onto me and said oh great we're going to pick up your unit we're going to send you a new one fantastic so for the past week this thing's been boxed up sitting by my front door courier never turned up and I've been sitting here four days emailing them gone completely cold completely silent so um, like I say the other video was how to balance the flywheel but with an unsafe repair but now I'm resigned to the fact that I'm actually going to have to keep this thing uh, and make the best of it so yay thanks Wahoo I'm going to take this thing apart and figure out a way of fitting the weight inside the flywheel and I'm going to document it just in case it works and there's not some kind of disaster um, so hopefully somebody else can try it unofficial repair I'm nothing to do with Wahoo wouldn't have anything to do with them no good product just badly supported cheers okay here we go um, I'm going to show you this time how to strip the thing down so I've got a 2.5 millimeter and a three millimeter allen key and a small precision screwdriver first thing I'm going to do is take the three mil and I'm going to undo this one this one and this one here to remove this handle to get it out of the way okay step two we want to get this cover off so we're going to take the 2.5 mil and there's one two three on the front here we need to take off. so moving around the back now with the screwdriver this one off it drops and that reveals the internal next thing we're going to want to do is take the belt off now I've just re-trimmed this thing and I've managed to reduce the belt noise hugely so I just want to have a look at the amount of slack we've got in this belt I'm going to push it with my finger it's actually quite loose see that so I'll try and remember how much that is these gate, gates belts actually they don't it's a feature of them they don't stretch so you can apply quite a bit of pressure based on how much it deviates it'll give you quite a good sense of how much tension there is in that belt so I'm going to undo this one to release the belt tensioner and then back this adjustment screw right off enable to enable to release the belt remove the belt a presto as you can see immediately since I've removed the weight that I had on it this mark here is where the flywheel will naturally stop now the belt's been removed you can see it's horribly off balance Okay, well I had to go away uh, to do so, a couple of things and I've just come back. Can't remember exactly what I've documented so far. But anyway, here we are. We've got the thing dismantled, we've taken the belt off, I've got myself a fresh cup of tea. And looking at this flywheel here, I've marked the point at which uh, the flywheel naturally balances. Uh, and if, if I spin it, it will eventually come back and settle there. Um, what you want to do is find the correct uh, amount of mass and where you want that mass to go to get the, ba the, the balance of the flywheel sorted out. So I'm using uh, this stuff, it's lead tape, wow, nearly dropped it. It's lead tape backed with adhesive. Uh, you can buy it on eBay. It's sometimes sold as golf club weights or racket weights or something like that. Um, and this is actually the mass. Um, it's about four grams. What I'm just going to do is stick it onto the flywheel opposite where my dot is 
Yep. And then if I spin it, we should now find ourselves in a position where the flywheel is much more balanced. So just watch this go round. Good therapy, this bit. actually starting to return. I'm going to cut a slightly bigger piece. Put a slightly larger weight on now. Mass I should say. It seems to be a bit happier. Here's the mass. Could still do with a bit more weight actually. but I'm going to go with it. That's fine. So the next, so obviously this mass that's on the outside here, um, that's no good. In, in the previous video, I surrounded it by tape, which is pretty unsightly. The other problem is that as you use this thing, uh, the whole flywheel is a sort of a heat sink for, for presumably the uh, electromagnet brake that's on the inside. Uh, so the whole thing gets pretty hot and um, uh, so the tape glue started to go quite soft and yeah pretty unsatisfactory so what I'm trying to do this time is get this in this location but on the inside uh, and secure it somehow and then that should be better presumably when we take it apart we'll see the factory balancing as well we shall see so I'm going to go ahead and have a crack at disassemb disassembling this to drop the flywheel off and uh, see how that goes. Well this is turning into a mission. Okay so I've determined that to get to the inside of the flywheel we need to take the flywheel off. I at first glance thought this was some sort of allen key in here but actually this is a threaded shaft and this cog drive cog goes around it. I've removed the tension wheel assembly completely and what I've done is I've just fitted these mole grips. I really really hate doing this because uh, you can damage the teeth of this cog but I've tried to do it carefully. This job is definitely a two cup of tea. Anyway it is starting to move now. Ah, I still can't move it one-handed. As you can see so this thread's starting to come away loose now. I'm going to keep going and hopefully free the flywheel. This has now come loose. Hooray, finally, after a lot of effort. What I should have done, and what I regret not having done, is uh, attached a bit of cloth or something to protect the teeth around the actual cog before attaching something as vicious as mole grips to it. Um, I've scored them very slightly. I was careful, but if I was a little bit less careful you could have damaged it and that would be really really difficult to fix so just make sure you do protect that cog before you attach anything as uh, brute force-ish as mole grips anyway here we go the flywheel is now free to spin and it's there um, it, I've worked its way loose a little bit let's let's see if we can slide this thing off it's a little bit tight. There we go. Ah, there you go. That's what I expected to see. Quite beautiful. So, coming back to this, where's our weight? Here. Uh, just to make sure we don't get this wrong, I'm going to put a tiny, tiny mark with the screwdriver just here. There you go, just a little tiny mark just to remind me of where the centre of this is. What I'm going to do is put this lead tape on the inside. So this time what I've done is I've cut a brand, oh, let's pick you up, a brand new bit out uh, with fresh adhesive on the back so when it does stick down it's as good as possible and there's my little mark that's centered
There we are. Interesting, there's two holes here. These, these are clearly uh, attempts at the factory to balance the flywheel. For some reason that process has not been right because I'm adding mass basically where they've taken it off. Um, so anyway, let's see how this works. I'm going to reassemble the thing, uh, or at least I'm just going to hang the bearings, uh, hang it onto its bearing and then just see where it stops. A little aside, um, just wanted to point out something. The thread on this is quite, how should we say it? Um, it's quite tight. It's also made of aluminium. Well, the steel, the shaft is made of steel. This is made of aluminium, which just gives me the impression it's be quite easy to cross thread it, um, make a real mash of it. So what I would do is, what I've done is I've just held it as vertically as I could with this and the mole grips and then spun, used the wheel to actually put it in. Now I've just, I've just meshed it just slightly uh, and a good idea is to just check that the thing is turning true. So you can see that's turning true, which means it's actually meshed correctly. If it was meshed incorrectly, it would be wobbling and then it would be, obviously, if you went to tighten it further, it would then cross thread and, and mess the whole thing up. Pretty critical bit of kit. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Like before, mole grips are just resting here and just by hand nips it up to a reasonable tightness with this flywheel. Don't really see any point in going crazy with tightness because the thread is, is is such that as we rotate forwards it'll naturally want to tighten anyway and obviously when the flywheel is carrying on we've got the free wheel that comes into action so it's never really going to unscrew itself I don't know quite why it was as tight as it was but it was really really tight to take apart but I'm just gonna leave it like that putting it back together so quick final check looking good Yeah, not perfect, but a darn sight better than it was. So um, let's carry on putting it back together and see how it is. So no vibrations now, and notice the belt noise is significantly reduced. <laughs> 